Hello and welcome to Minority Arts Appreciation Society podcast. Where we're ticking all the boxes and bringing a much needed minority perspective to popular internet discourse. I'm Josh, my pronouns are he and him, and I lead the music discussion. Hi, I'm Matty, my pronouns are she, her. Um, today we're reviewing Heim. I, you know, I always forget the album name. I don't know why. I've been doing that too. I've been doing. Is it Days Are Gone? Days Are Gone. <laughs> falling, falling down. Days falling. I keep thinking it's just called Heim because <laughs> they're Heim, you know. Yeah. This is the Heim album. Anyway, no Heim. Days Are Gone. Uh, uh, before we get started, be sure to uh, link in the D box below, as as Hank Green would say, uh, to our social <laughs> media accounts, Twitter. And and Instagram and and subscribe to us on all of all of your all of your favorite streaming services. I believe the most popular is Spotify. So Spotify this is out there. Subscribe to us on Spotify. Uh, Hank Green. I follow him on Instagram. He keeps posting like TikToks, and they're like weird dad TikToks where Aww. where like a, a teenager who was trending says like a science thing of like I don't understand this science thing. How does this science thing happen? The world is crazy. And then Hank Green <laughs> in with like a actually I can actually explain that. And then he explains the science thing, <laughs> and it's like they're meant to be someone actually. I was like um some, when they're funny, they're like oh damn that was pretty funny. But it's like dad TikTok funny. It's just yeah. weird that bad TikToks are a thing. Aww. Heim, 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 Heim. Heim are a <laughs> pop rock act from San Fernando Valley, California. They are a Jewish, a Israeli, um, I think they were in a Are you okay? Band. They were in a... <laughs> I had so many interests in like context stuff for, <laughs> for everyone before this, and I was trying to find context for Heim, and it's just they just materialized one day. There's just yeah. nothing about they they were in a cover band when they were when they were kids. Uh, how are they like related to each other? How do they know each other? They're sisters. Oh, they're all sisters. Yeah, their last name is Heim. Oh, that's their real name. Wow, good for them. Yeah, good for her cinematic universe. Um, <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Heim. Are you regretting doing my, my a favorite, fucking Heim trilogy? My, my, my favorite piece of Heim trivia is um, <laughs> the basis. <laughs> the basis. S. S. How do you pronounce her name? S. S. Time. S. Day. I S. Day. I don't know any of their names. How do you pronounce? <laughs> I feel like I'm in a jar <laughs> media episode. Este Heim. It might be Esther. Esther. Yeah, I yeah, would Esther. say that looks like Esther. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Esther Heim. This is my favorite piece of Heim lore. She, she, there's a meme. There was a meme back when I was a young teenager, back in like 2014, 2015. Of Esther Heim doing weird faces when she played the bass live. Oh, so if you if you Google Esther Heim, I actually think I might face. have seen this. It was it was it was a pretty popular if you, like indie if you search movie. Esther Heim, <laughs> Esther Heim faces is the first thing that comes up. <laughs> and I remember like at some point I think I saw a thing where she was like really annoyed about, it, and she was like, uh, oh. This is- this is sexism, and I get ridiculed as a woman in the music industry. It might be valid. I can't like say it's not valid. No, also, like I don't think anyone's looked this bad playing bass before. <laughs> I, I was surprised at that. I thought she kind of leaned into the meme. I I, I thought yeah, that was a pretty good meme. But either way, um, and also Esther Heim played a, a, a major role in Thundercats music video, Dragon Ball Durag. Have you seen a music video for Dragon Ball Durag? Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. You seen it? Have you seen it? I have not. Sorry. Oh, it's a great video. So in that video, uh, Thundercat is 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 trying to. It's directed by Zach Fox, and Thundercat is trying to uh, move to various women, uh, such as um, you know the esteemed uh, musician uh, Kali Uchis is in that video. 
Uh, oh, sweet. And, and, and your Thundercat, you know, tries to sing, serenade her from her window about his Dragon Ball Durag, and she's uninterested. And so is another woman in the video who I, who I didn't know who the other woman And the, the climax of the video, the, the big, the, the punchline is uh, he's trying to flirt with, he, the Heim girls are walking into their apartment in California, and 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 and, and Thundercat comes out of, of the garbage can, right? And he's like dancing, singing out his do rag, and they're like, "Yo, this guy is this guy's some scrub. We got to keep moving. We got to keep moving," <laughs> you know. And, and then es- Esther Heim, who I think is is kind of like the the heart of the group, you know, the the funny one, the cool one. She's like the uh, um. <laughs> I'm not helping you out here. You're blown <laughs> on this. She is to this group what Finn Wolfhard is to the film It, Chapter One. Um, <laughs> I thought you were going to say to his band Calipurnia. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, um, what? <laughs> he got some decent songs. Anyway, um, and and in the Thundercat music video, while all the Heim sisters are kind of like, this dude's whack, we got to leave. Esther Heim kind of looks at Thundercat and, you know, you've seen the meme where it's like the woman considering something. At first she's, yeah, and yeah. then she's like, hmm. And she's kind of, hmm. That's kind of, that's the face that Esther Heim makes. And she kind of like walks towards Thundercat. She's like, she's ready to go. She's ready to go. And mm. then her sister, not Daniela Heim, the other one. Alana Heim. Alana Heim, who sort of, the least memorable Heim sister, in my opinion, I don't know <laughs> rank the three Heim sisters. A Pulls her back. Heim She's like, "Whoa, you gotta, you gotta chill it out." Yeah, Esther's my favorite for sure. Daniela's like, she's like the Pink Ranger, you know. She's she's like the, uh, you know, now, Pink I Ranger's S think... tier, bro. Oh, no. Nah. She okay. Uh, okay. Uh, she's well. It's, they, okay, forget the Pink Ranger metaphor. <laughs> Daniela Heim <laughs> is like Leonardo in. The te- you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right? Yeah, yeah. I think... <clears throat> I think Esther Heim, my favourite of the Heim sisters, <sighs> is sort of the... Michelangelo, I'd say, of the group. And then I'd say Alana <laughs> Heim is, 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 is the... <clears throat> Donatello. I want you to be real honest with me. I'm going to ask you a candid question. Mm-hmm. You have very little to say about this album. <laughs> so you're <laughs> dragging out the content. I do not know how I'm going to market this episode <laughs> to the Heim subreddit. I, I, do, <laughs> I got downvoted to hell for even suggesting in the Korean cinema subreddit that uh, I Saw the Devil has problematic portrayals of rape. I just got. Did you actually get downvoted? Hell. Did you actually yep. get? Yeah. I mean, I zero. I got buried. It's like, ext- I feel like anyone watches that, like a human being watches that and go, hmm. I don't know, dude. This is kind of misogynistic. Another cool thing about the Heim album no. is, uh, <laughs> is the music video for number. Song my song five <laughs> features ASAP Ferg, and actually, it's loads of like weird celebrity cameos in it. Can I read them out? Mm, I think you're gonna. <laughs> the music video for my song five <laughs> features celebrity cameos from Ezra Koenig. Of Vampire Weekend, who's now married to Rashida Jones, Kesha, <laughs> Big Sean, Grimes, and okay. ASAP Ferg. I mean that that's a pretty good cameo list. Okay, yeah, no, but this, this does genuinely open up an interesting thing about Heim. Is where did they come from? This was their first album, and mm-hmm. how the hell do you get people that big in your fir- in a music video from your first album? The answer to that question is industry plant. Okay, I I will not engage in that discussion. <laughs> a, a disproportionate amount of women compared to men are accused of being industry plants. And my personal opinion is that most of the artists who get bigger industry plants. 
Like almost all of mm. them. Yeah, Unless okay, you're like fair. Alex G and there's like four years of back catalogue before he actually got popular. And it's very clear, that, you know, the grind happened. Same with uh, fucking, fucking black dresses. You know, they start from the bottom and they built their way up. They built their way up. Yeah. I do think most artists are, are plants. Uh, and I think I wouldn't, <clears throat> I'm not going to engage in that discussion about high end. Their parents are musicians, so it's clear that their parents probably do work in the industry. Yeah. No, yeah, you're right. I'm letting I'm letting my Heim opinions <clears throat> get get the better of me because I, I do think the term industry plant is kind of outdated. And I think it well not outdated, but irrelevant because I guess, like I you guess, said. I don't okay, just maybe everyone I, I is. have maybe I have been dragging the discussion out a bit. And I guess what I'm confused about. If I kn- okay, so in our Paul Thomas Anderson episode, we revealed that he's directing their videos for their, their new album that came out this year, last year. Yeah, yeah. And 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 you express a deep hatred, and I've never felt. Oh, one minute, I've never felt strongly about Haim. Uh, my history with Haim, and I'll ask you what your history is in a moment. Is yeah, I, I, I heard their first album when I was like fourteen. Also, it was really popular. You can it was really big. Like it was huge. Like up there with like Was it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think it was huge. Like with Lord Lord's Pure Heroine, you know, oh, and this yeah. album, like, they were just a huge kind of like you know They did have a bit of a synergy going on. Yeah, like this kind of radio indie wave that was happening of like indie getting really big on the radio with bands like the nineteen seventy five and the neighborhood who like have this kind of indie appeal like they are the indie aesthetic but yeah. like the radio ready indie you know and i mm-hmm. think time were coming up with those bands and i heard that album and I, I didn't like it very much when i was that age um i didn't hate it but i, I thought it was kind of boring and then the second album came out and i thought that was offensively bad i really i remember walking down the road listening to that album and just really a gas i was like wow wow i guess they were just like one hit wonders <laughs> and, and then, and then, and I thought they were gone. I thought that was it. I thought I'm never going to hear about again. Um, and and like Lord, like 1975, they they did stick around. And, and you know, you got the four Thomas Anderson videos. Uh, and and they seem like bigger than ever now. You know, big bigger than they were in 2013, perhaps. Um, uh, they seem pretty prominent. Um, yeah, they they've got a thing mm-hmm. going. So, what what is your history of Heim? So, I've been aware of Haim in kind of the background for the past few years and <clears throat> whenever I see their music videos around it just sounds like the most boring radio friendly just kind of vibe not no it's not really vibe music it's not really vibe music um but just generally just kind of inoffensive nothing to cling on to stuff and it's it's that kind of Harry Styles thing that I have where mm. um, I'm like, there is nothing in about this. It, it it doesn't piss me off in the same way as Harry Styles because I feel like Harry Styles gets a lot more like artistic credit than whereas Haim are just more kind of like generally popular, which I, I like have less of a problem with. Um, it's more when, when I think like it, what really pisses me off is when people like lord people I think are just really boring as like artistic achievements um whereas <clears throat> Heim have just annoyed me because like it's so boring like summer girl is one of the most boring singles i've ever heard and i'm not joking there's nothing to it i don't know i just i just have a distaste for them as a band yeah, I, I wasn't looking forward to this discussion because, <laughs> because okay, so I've had a very interesting experience with, with Days Are Gone, uh, preparing for the podcast. So I, I listened to it three times in preparation. Uh, and, and the first time, I was like, yep, yeah, I remember why I kind of thought this was forgettable originally. You know, there are a few songs in it that I remember liking and I still like them. And then more other ones that I'd forgotten about and I will forget about again. Then I heard it a second time, uh, and I was like, oh, a few more songs are kind of growing on me. And yeah, I'm kind of digging some of this. And then the third time I listened to it, and I was taking notes, I had a really 
good time of it and mm. and I enjoyed it. And I was like, I don't wanna I don't wanna do another one of those episodes where I like the thing and then Mighty gets angry. <laughs> How could you like the thing? The thing is bad. And I'm like I don't know. Some of these songs are pretty fun, though. So I had a sneaking suspicion it was going to be one of these, you son of a bitch. And it, I swear it wasn't intentional. <laughs> but, and look, I can party with the hardest of them, okay? I listen to Swans. I, I've heard <laughs> Swan albums, you know? You know, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard the weird experimental stuff. And sometimes... You know, after a long day of work, <laughs> it, it isn't that bad to sit down with, 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 the, with the 80s nostalgia rock group, you know, who are going to give me songs that sound like Fleetwood Mac and the Bangles, you know? I Sometimes disagree. I can boogie with I that. I disagree with they I think, like I think, I've, oh, okay, well, well uh, the internet has generally agreed that, that, that there's weird. not Fleetwood Mac worship on this album. Um... <sighs> So, so, I mean, you know, you're outnumbered. I'll, I'll, I'll take the <laughs> internet on. Bring on the I, storm. I, think, I mean, they themselves cite Fleetwood Mac as a big... I mean, you have to admit that the approach to songwriting is very fleet. Like, okay, The Wire songwriting, is such yeah. a Fleetwood Mac song. Yeah, all right, fine. Um, but, but, but yeah, no, I, I, I do think... I think I agree. There's a lot of kind of mediocrity here. Um, but I... I <laughs> Maybe because I know where they go. Maybe because I know where they go, and I'm judging them on kind of in, on their own terms. Yeah, I I do I do think I think in the context of their career, this is a, a pretty good album, and I think I think the highs are pretty pretty strong. Um, and I, at its worst, like the my least favorite song on this album, I don't think are offensively bad enough. To really be up- angry, I can't be genuinely angry about this. Maybe it's so inoffensive that I genuinely can't be angry about it. You know, I understand. I understand why this album. Okay, I think I think genuinely the best way I can respond is to read out the statement I prepared for this album. Hello, listener. Today, Josh has asked me to review Hames. Days are gone. Heim. Heim, fuck. You did start from the... again. <laughs> it's their name. It's their family name. Fuck. <laughs> Hello. Today, <laughs> fuck. Hello, listener. Today, Josh has asked me to review Heim's Days Are Gone. I feel that this has been done to victimize me in my hatred for their music, and Josh has succeeded. This isn't the worst album we've ever reviewed. To be honest, not by far. To be honest, by far, rather. Um, but it has slightly broken me. And I'm not just saying that because I think Heim are a boring band. And even upon my first listen of this album, I would say overall that I just about enjoyed it. Just about. However, on a second listen, without the self-deprecating allure of what a Heim album sounds like and the aim of coming out of the listen with concrete discussion points, I found myself bored senseless. Bored senseless because the songs on this album, and not every song, not every song, we'll get, and we'll get into which, but I believe a lot of these songs on this album can be boiled down into four musical elements. And this isn't an aesthetic. It's not a it's not a artistic choice. It feels like a crutch and a sign of the band's I think creative bankruptcy. I think there is very little talent here. And I think this album is perfectly listenable, but Having to listen to this, like I don't, I don't want to, I, I don't listen to albums that we podcast with like a podcast brain on. But there is a certain element of listening to something constructively, and having to listen to it in that way was was genuinely painful. Because again, I want to, I want to lay out these four elements. It it became these four elements for me, and once I identified them, every song, well, most of them, was just prison. It was prison. Um, these are shimmery synths that accentuate the vocal melody, that's number one. Swingy, impassioned vocals with anthem- anthemic harmonies. Pacing drum rhythms. And finally, plucky, twangy, syncopated guitars. Makes for a fucking torturous album. Because I, I, To interject, interject. 
I heard the new 1975 album. <laughs> this is not torturous. Like no, th- okay, okay, okay. And and okay. I, before you continue <laughs> the statement, you know this is a podcast. This is a dialogue. Um, <laughs> I agree that the the instrumental palette of this album is limited. Uh, however, it does serve towards. I mean, this is pretty much just um, a nostalgia piece for that era of of 80s pop rock and all the elements you mentioned are kind of dipping back into that well and yes that is derivative but it does make conceptual sense of what Haim is trying to be and also I think with the songwriting uh, I I do not think you're giving them enough credit for they they really do like try out different stuff for the songwriting and the production as the album goes on and I think you get kind of interesting experimentations on the Heim formula before it's done. Uh, so I don't think this is, that's entirely fair. And I will elaborate I, that later on, but I'll let you go on. Okay, well, torturous is the wrong word, but I, I, I think I, I was, I'm my feeling of imprisonment when I just felt like this album had nothing more to offer me. And, and, and you're right, writing probably the best thing about this album. Um, but I think that the the experimentations that they do make still just really fit into this kind of bland, radio-friendly thing they have going on. And I, I think their whole shtick of, like, 80s nostalgia is just sad and a bit pointless. Like, I don't... I. I don't I don't get what niche this album would ever occupy in music that like actually means something important. Like I I like this band is just so like they I feel like they exist to be on the radio and yeah. and I and I hate it. Yeah. And, and and that's not because they exist to be I, I don't hate it because they exist to be popular. I just I hate the fact that there's just nothing else going on here. Uh, yeah, I think I think um, I will because I did enjoy this album. Uh, I do just think it's like a solid pop album. I I so I will defend elements of it, uh, but I I will say like in points of criticism, I do I do think Heim Heim are almost comically white bread. They're quite possibly the, some of the yeah. most like milk toast white bread <laughs> like. Border plate radio indie artist there is like if Bojack Horseman was gonna do a joke about like a fake radio indie band, it would be Heim. Uh, yeah. And and I, I do agree. I think like because I'm I'm really like talking about this now. Just in the context, I like comparing things to things we've already discussed in the podcast because we have like a, a local frame of reference. Um, mm. And I do think Heim are very similar to the 1975 in terms of both are radio indie pop acts who are obsessed with 80s nostalgia i had the same feelings yeah. um b- but high were just much more safe uh the 1975 if you don't like them it is like the most expressive dislike like matt healy <laughs> gives you so much to work with yes yeah. he is such a weird guy and 1975 lyricism, whether you love it or hate it, is so distinct and like you know that's a 1975 lyric. And and you and he has like themes that run throughout his albums and yeah. progress. And there are things you can say about it. Uh, whereas the lyrics on, on this Heim album just really just bounce off of me. Whether the the lyrics of falling, which are kind of generic 80s pop rock lyrics about never giving up and never backing uh... down. Or kind of just generic relationship songs, which are kind of um, sort of like uh, um, I really don't want to sound condescending uh, because they are women artists, but sort of songs which are like bitter heartbreak songs but kind of about asserting your power in the relationship as you know, a woman over, I assume men um you know what I mean? Kind of like a Gone Girl yeah. vibe in, in some of these tracks. And, and to me, those are the two lyrical themes that kind of run throughout. So I do, I do think the genericness of Heim, the fact that there's nothing on this album that I actually dislike, uh, there's kind of just this 
baseline this is fine feeling this is okay i'm fine with this <laughs> like when it's at its worst that is probably the greatest indictment of the band it is always a testament to how bland they are that their blandness has become like iconic <clears throat> almost like i know every member of heim i know heim when i see them yeah they're so weirdly iconic they are like the starbucks yeah no this is the <laughs> band, thing you know <laughs> they are the oh, starbucks yeah. band in 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 not just as much of like their aesthetic but in the way i see their creativity and like it's just like i picture their like songwriting process and it just kind of makes me sad like because if i was in a band like this and and we were like okay what are we writing the song about today and we were like okay and they would and we were all just like let's do the heim thing and throw in some normal lyrics about never giving up i'd hate myself i'd be like god i i just oh it's so sad and 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 like not even shallow just kind of fake and uh, it just uh, i i don't have before i move on to what i like about this album because I, I do really like this album to be honest with you what not really i no i do like no i do really like i do enjoy listening to I've had the song stuck in my head today and I had a good time listening to it. Um, but in terms of, it seems like the kind of thing that they are being edgy about or, or trying to be uh, trans- transgressive about is, um, you know, the whole of being women in music, uh, which is the name of their third album, Women in Music Part 3. Mm. Um, I, I don't know. I, and that's cool. But I think it, it, it does a real... In terms of, like, how they write about gender and and their approach to this transgression pay, uh, pays a, this is a lack of reverence for like the precedent the precedented kind of great women in music uh you know from pj harvey to yes, yes. to the whole riot girl movement you know of sleeta kinney and bikini kill who who made like insanely transgressive and like aggressive statements these are very privileged people making very safe music and y- I, as the woman of the podcast utilizing their women womanhood to make up for the fact titling an album women like women in music part three like it's still very much their shtick like where not only is lingua ignota uh, like to just use her musically but she's also making music about issues she's faced that specifically as having a band like heim who i find so creatively bereft make that their thing is like and act like like i don't know it feels like they're like claiming the title of women in music and what yeah while, while we can both agree this is a pretty milk toast act a starbucks act if you will i do think this album has like a structure that never let it completely get boring for me like i think this is a very well constructed pop album in terms of i think the first four tracks are kind of a very um 80s pop rock inspired you know jams and and these are kind of fun kind of uh easy pop songs and then you kind of move into the with honey and i this is kind of like slow down break in the album and then after that we move into like the really anthemic part of the album with don't save me days are gone uh where you get these huge kind of almost like arena pop rock songs uh with huge hooks of the 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 um entire group vocals of days are gone days are gone oh days are gone days are gone oh which i think is just infectious very fun very likable um uh, and then, and then, and then the third part of the album, you get kind of this kind of a more like deconstructed time with like my song five, which is just weird, stripped down, like garage kind of rocky track. I, I, I definitely feel the inspiration of of groups like the White Stripes and Black Keys on on this song, and same with like Go Slow and Let Me Go, which are again very like kind of more stark, stripped down tracks, which. I, which, 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 you know, I, I don't love that type of Heim song as much as uh, the middle portion, which is my favorite part of the album. But still, I do think there is an, an effort to to switch it up a bit in structure. And then, so yeah, I do think structurally this it just works as a, a pop album for me. And I do think it does enough to change up 
the songwriting and production approach to stay like to not be comp- not so it doesn't all completely blend in. Like I do remember these songs. Mm. Um, so 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 I will praise them for that. I do think it's I do think I, in that way I think it's a, a good, well structured pop album. <laughs> awesome. So um. Let's move on to our favorite and least favorite tracks. So that's three favorite tracks and one least favorite track. So Matty, I'll let you start. Okay, cool. I, I do want to say before we start our um, favorite tracks is that I did genuinely like all of these songs. These aren't kind of like, uh, I like I have to pick three favorite songs. So here we go. I actually do think these are all genuinely good and like Josh, um, these are songs that I did have the hooks kind of stuck in my head for a while. Um, I'll just go through them sequentially. So first off, Falling, um, I think this is a really, really good opener. And like I said, that first time I listened to it, it did genuinely set my hopes quite high for the album and is part of why I liked it a fair amount on the first time. Um, Instrumentally, I just really like the the orchestral stra- scale of the drums in the chorus. I think it really actually adds to the kind of anthemic vocals really well. Um, and is a moment where I actually find, like, I think the more conventional elements of their songwriting actually all come together really well. Um, uh, secondly, um, is Don't Save Me. Um, I think the harmonic vocals in this are actually just pretty fantastic and really add to the sense of rhythm of the song, um, which I think is really neat um, because it has this kind of... It, this song reminds me quite a lot of Hatchy um, in that it has this very like uh, innocent feeling to it and it is very shimmery and shining, but it's genuinely um, has a has a very... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Has a very distinct sense of rhythm and how to make it work for a pop song uh, that I really like about it. It does feel like, with my problem with this about album being like kind of engineered, it does pay off sometimes because when when a when a formula works, it does work, and I I genuinely think here it is like perfectly all coming together to make that to make a very satisfying paced satisfyingly paced pop song yeah and I, I do think just to cut in i do think um daniel himes uh vocals are a bit flat and drab at points at, like, throughout this album mm. and, and and given the summary instrumentals i think her her vocals are a bit too severe too austere at points uh, i did but i think that but i think don't save me is what is one of the tracks lyrically where it really fits her lo- mm. lower register you know the cynical tone of the track kind of fits her vocals um, so that's one thing I like about Don't Save Me, but I'll also criticize from the album a bit. Yeah, awesome. And finally, uh, Days Are Gone. Uh, I do think this is a pretty compelling title track. I, I'm not a huge fan of the verse, but I think the chorus and, and those those syncopated guitar melodies do work fantastically along with the more grandiose elements of their vocals. The guitars are very... Um, playful and quiet in the background while all th- it sounds like all three of them chant very victoriously about saying days are gone and it's just quite an effective um rousing track um so yeah my my least favorite track um is let me go um i find the build-up of this song incredibly boring and meandering it just doesn't really sound like it's actually going to go anywhere and and then when it finally does it's this incredibly messy and kind of just blare instrumental that really makes you wonder what the past two minutes have been about um yeah. and i really and the, the riffs in that song are a bit a bit loud rocky and i mean of like arctic monkeys or something. yeah yeah i had i had that same thought too and um so yeah i'd give this album a, a, a decent not recommend uh it it I don't want to make this album out to sound worse than it actually is. Um, it's not truly bad, but I, I find its formulas and its, as Josh put it, milk toastisms incredibly irritating and entrapping. And I, I, I think it's very much something that came along as 
an oblig as a sort of obligation um to release a set of singles alongside with and yeah i i i didn't really get much out of it so yeah that's those are those are my thoughts i don't think days are gone wasn't the single which is really shocking to me that that is like that is crazy that's actually very surprising that, that i mean that's your that's your uh that's your lead single right there days are gone. yeah um let me let me fact check that i might be wrong no yeah that was a deep cut <laughs> that was that's crazy yeah that's crazy if i could change your mind was a single somehow but days are gone wasn't good what? enough i guess on, on to my favorite and least favorite tracks. I agree with Matty of Falling. I think that's a really fun opener. I too was a little bit worried to return this album, but this was really reassuring. I think I think Falling uh, displays Heim in in peak form. This is like the perfect version of the Heim formula, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, it's fun, summery, 80s synth pop rock inspired jams. Uh, with a strong group dynamic and the group vocals are now I'm fallen. It is so infectious um, and anthemic in a really good way. And, and the pop writing here is just yeah, very strong. Uh, I think the pre-chorus and the actual chorus both see each other up in a way that's like quite distinct and fun and really builds momentum. So yeah, I, I dig that track. And you know, as a breakout single, it, it makes sense. It was worthy. Um, next up, Honey and I, which is a track that um, only grew on me a lot on my third listen for like for the review, uh, and I, I think it's a nice shift from the shtick of the first four tracks, doing kind of the same, basically the same song four times. Uh, this is a nice change of pace, uh, and we move towards some some Paul Simon worship. Uh, there's the laid back guitar licks um, that run throughout the track, which I think are really nice. It feels like a central, you know, sunset on holiday vibes. Uh, the synths really work for me on this track. I think they weren't used very effectively throughout the album to their full potential, but here I think this, this the synths have sprinkled very carefully to give that extra texture and uh, add a real nice flourish to the track and, and add to its sweetness. Um, yeah, I think this is a super satisfying song. I really love um, how right before the outro, like uh, Danielle's voice kind of reverberates as the synth flourish and fades into like a bed of like, fades into a bed of soft guitars as the track like cools down for like a soft reprise of the chorus. It's just so pleasant. Like it feels like a Donkey Kong Country level, you know? I feel like I'd hear this on holiday <laughs> in Ibiza, you know, my hotel, you know, 5 p.m. before the party starts. You would just, Ching out, they're playing Heim in the reception. Yeah, I would vibe with this. This is a good vibe. I might be biased just because I really like, I just like the poor Simon vibe. Um, but yeah, and then, um, my song five, I, I enjoyed this a, a weird amount. I actually like didn't like this on my first listen, I don't think. Um, but it kept growing on me, I think, because it is just so different from the rest of the album that I really like that it's there. It kind of makes the album feel more full and like varied. Um, it's it's quite it's a stomping romp, you know. It's a move away from the '80s pop rock into that, yeah, garage rock inspired stuff, and and I I enjoyed that. I think Daniel's vocals work really well here. It's this kind of like mantra, almost like whispered to herself about like regretting decisions made in a relationship, which kind of ref- imitates you know the kind of muttering to yourself internal circular monologue. Um. Yeah, I really like the guitars that come in in the second half of the track. I, th- I think it's, it's a it's a lonely, punchy, and, and fun track, which really um, jolts the album up for some energy that, that, that I appreciated. Um, and then my least favorite track is If I Could Change Your Mind. Uh, I agree with Matty that Let Me Go is quite a dull song. Um, but at least I appreciate that Let Me Go did something to vary the acoustic dynamics on the album with like a more. Uh, a more spaced out and like severe kind of track, a more stark track. Mm. Whereas, whereas if I could change your mind, it's this, it's this, it's this very generic eighties pop rock worship, very drab, very boring. The synth inclusions are very underutilized. I can't remember anything about that song. If I'm honest with you, like every time mm. I hear it, I forget about it. Even like two. By the time Honey and I has ended, you know, I've completely forgotten about it. <laughs> mind. So, so that's my least favorite track. Uh, I think 
it's just very wallpaper. Overall, I'd give this a, a decent recommend. I mean, there's nothing really insanely innovative here. It's just a decent pop album, and I think it's fine. And hopefully, for they don't really play Heim that much anymore in stores. I guess they <laughs> are. They're probably going to play the newer songs. But if I if I hear this at a, 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 a H&M, you know, have a little boogie, <laughs> have a little boogie in the owl. I'll be like, yep, I like that Heim song. What's weird about this, I'm realizing we're both gonna have like encyclopedic knowledge of Heim songs by the end of this. Like, I know that's gonna the be average strange. person. Range. Only Heim fans listen to Heim this much. Like <laughs> it's, it's pretty exciting. Well, that's our Heim Heim review. Uh next next time in the Heim trilogy. <laughs> I I think look, I think you're not ready for what's coming. I, I think I think Is what it- I think you're gonna be. I think you're gonna miss. You, you're I'm gonna, gonna miss days, days, days are gone. gone. I'm gonna. gonna be, I'm gonna miss days the days gone. that are gone. Oh yeah. shit. Um, but who knows? Maybe I'll turn around and completely adore the second album. But like, my memory of this was was like Poor. I didn't listen to Women in Music Part Three because I didn't want to be. I was like, nope, I did that once, and it and that was horrible. <laughs> and I'm not going back. Yeah. yeah. Next time in the Heim trilogy, uh, something to tell you. There's 2017 release. Uh, oof, well, I'm I'm very excited to talk about that because I kind of wanna I kind of wanna return to it. I feel like I need mm. to like put that to to bed. You know. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I don't know how the hell I'm gonna market this episode. I I almost feel bad putting it in the Heim subreddit. <laughs> like these are just like do it nice people enjoying their days. Excited about <laughs> Heim. I- and you're just I like, just... but that that's 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 a little ways from now. What are we doing next week, Maddie, for our switcheroo episode? Okay, so um, our switcheroo episode uh, next week is falling on our fiftieth episode, um, and so you know what they say. They say you don't really know, you don't really get good at podcasting till your a hundredth episode. So we're halfway there. Which we're is still awesome. shit, but we're halfway there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're halfway to goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I did. I did want to do something kind of special. Where so for our fiftieth episode, we're going to be talking about Beyonce's Lemonade, and and so for our fifty-first episode, we'll be doing the Lemonade film that was released alongside um, Lemonade. Cool. Well, days are gone. That was it. That was the Heim review. <laughs> that was the Heim episode. And yeah. The first of three. Yeah. Probably right. gonna be some of our least popular episodes. I don't know who <laughs> this is being made for. Um <laughs> if anyone enjoyed this, I hope uh, well, yeah, catch us next week for our Beyonce Lemonade review. So uh, should be good one. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. <laughs>